This is section 1.6 in our textbook, Equations of Lines. We're going to go over some brief Algebra 1 review here. Um, I'm going to start off with a slope. So the slope of a line is denoted with the letter M. Um, we use coordinates for x1, y1, and x2, y2. So any two arbitrary points in a coordinate plane, uh, we use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, this represents the change in y over the change in x which is also known as a, con a rate of change as well. So I'm going to find the slope here. Um, you could use this formula every time, but if it's already in a coordinate system, obviously you can also count boxes. So if I were to count the slope from here to here, I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So down 5 and left 1 so that I have an overall slope here of positive 5. So my first line, I'm just going to use um, the slope for this first line is m sub 1. So m sub 2 here, if I go up, I can also change direction. I can go from this point here to this point. I have a slope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going up 5 and right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for an overall slope of positive 1 here. All right, so I will let you guys check the slopes for each one of those if you'd like. The only one I actually want to talk about is this line here. So if I have a slope here and I'm trying to get from this point to this point, I have a rise of zero, right? I'm not actually going up at all. So I have a rise of zero and a run of one, two, three, four, five, giving me an overall slope of zero. Okay, so I'd like to now talk about linear equation forms and come back to that idea of slope in a second. Okay, so point slope form. This is y minus y1 equaling m times x minus x1. So this is for any point, you just need a point, and you need to know the slope of a line in order to write that in this form. For slope-intercept form, you need to know a specific point. So this is more restrictive here because we need to know a specific point. This is going to be your y-intercept. Horizontal lines are always written as y equals some number. So a horizontal line is going to look like that. Vertical line, x equals some number. These are for all vertical lines in the coordinate plane. And then for parallel lines, we need to have the same slope. So two lines are parallel if they have the exact same slope. And lastly, perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal slopes. So if we go back to that, um, these examples here, I believe we had a uh, perpendicular here with this line here. So if I went down, I'm trying to find the slope of this line. If I go down one into the right, one, two, three, four, five, I see that I have a slope here of negative one fifth. So this line is perpendicular to this line here. And we use a right angle to show that they are perpendicular. So we have opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay. So let's move on to example number one here. We're going to find the equation of a line through 2, 6 that is parallel to the x-axis first. So we know our point, and we know that it's supposed to be parallel to the x-axis, which means that it has a slope of 0, right? So if it's parallel, slope is 0. We could start if we wanted to in... Um, point slope form, so we know our point here, 2, 6, we're going to use y minus 6 equaling 0 times uh, x minus 2. So this is just one way of finding our slope here, I'm just verifying algebraically that it's y equals 6. Second way is just to draw a sketch, so if we know it's parallel to the, the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis, and it's through the point 2, 6, so let's say the point here is 2, 6, we know that every y-coordinate then for this horizontal line must be 6 which is why we get the line y equals 6. So, so there's a way to do it al algebraically as well, just showing it through point slope form here. Uh, the next question, we're going to find a line through again to 6 that has an x-intercept of 5. So this time, we know that it crosses at 5, 0, and it goes to the point 2, 6. So we are going to need to do two things here. First, we're going to have to find the slope. And then we can use either point slope form or we can use slope intercept form. So 
So in this case, um, I would like to use probably point slope form. It's going to be easier to use point slope form because one, we don't know what the y-intercept is here. That would just be one more step that we need to do in order to solve. So I'm going to find the slope first. So I'm going to take 6 minus 0 and subtract from that 2 minus 5. So I have negative 2 is my slope. And now I can plug that back into point slope form. So for point slope form, you just need one coordinate. It doesn't matter which one you choose here. It could be 2, 6, or 5, 0. So if I choose 2, 6, I'm ending up with y minus 6 equaling negative 2 times x minus 2. And if I choose the point 5, 0, I get y minus 0 equals negative 2 times x minus 5. So again, either of these could be used. There is no particular right answer here because I can use an infinite number of points. These are just the two that I see on my line here. All right, the next one, um, we're again trying to find the equation of a line through 2, 6, but this time, t this time it's going to be perpendicular to this line, 2x plus 3y equals 6. So the very first thing we need to do again is to figure out what their slope is. So I need to find the slope. In order to do that, I'm going to solve for y here so that I can clearly see what the slope is in this line. So if I were to subtract 2x and divide by 3, I get a slope of negative 2 thirds. So I don't really care about this part of the equation at all. All I'm really interested in is what the slope of that line was. So it's negative 2 thirds. That means my new slope for the perpendicular line is going to be positive 3 halves. Okay? And now I use the fact that I have the point 2, 6 to write the equation of the line. So I'm going to use y minus y1 equaling m times x minus x1 because I have a point, I have a slope, and I'm just going to plug in. So y minus 6 equals positive 3 halves times x minus 2 because again we're using the point 2, 6 because it's through that point and has a slope of 3 halves. Alright, so that's point slope form, right? Point slope form. Now I want to actually use both forms here because the question asked me to use both and I'm going to find now slope intercept form. So we could do the same thing and now solve for b. There's two ways to do this problem. If you want to find slope intercept form from scratch, meaning you're going to use this slope here and the coordinate 2, 6, then we'd start with what we know, which is that our equation should look like this, y equals 3 halves x plus b. We can then substitute in the x coordinate in for x and this y coordinate in for our y so that we can solve for b. So we'd have 6 equaling 3 halves times 2 plus b, and we would get a y-intercept here of, oh, I'm sorry, that's a 3. Oops, a y-intercept of 3. If I subtract the 3 over, I get b equals 3. So I should get y equals 2 thirds x, or sorry, 3 halves x, plus 3. So that's one way of doing the slope. Now, if you already have something in point slope form, though, um, getting into slope intercept form is pretty easy from here because you're just going to distribute. So we have y minus 6 equaling 3 halves x minus 3, and then add the 6 over to get 3 halves x plus 3. So we get the exact same answer here, slope intercept form and point slope form here, two different forms for the same line. Okay? All right, let's go to the next page now. This is the last question for a very brief review of linear equations. If a line goes through 6, 2 and has a slope of negative 3, find the area of the triangle bounded by the line and the coordinate axes. Okay, so I just want to draw a little sketch of this first. So the line's supposed to go through 6, 2. So even just a quick sketch, whether you have a coordinate grid or not, it's always going to help you to visualize. So it has a slope of negative 3. Basically what it's saying is that through this point, I can go in either direction, but with a slope of negative 3. So I'm going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3 to the right 1, or up 3 to the left 1 to get a slope of negative 3. So this line is going to extend like so. And again, it has a slope of negative 3. We want to find the area that's bounded by this line in the coordinate axis. So in other words, this triangle that's formed here, wherever that line ends up intersecting, I want to find this area. Okay. So basically I need to know, since this is a right triangle, right, these are, our axes are vertical and horizontal lines here, it must intersect perpendicularly. 
So all I need is to find the base and the height of this triangle, right? To find area, which is one half base times height. So I'm going to find the base here and the height, find those values, and then plug it into my formula, my area formula. So the first thing is we need to figure out where this is intersecting. Okay, so let's review what we talked about with x and y intercepts. This line, this point, is called the x-intercept. So if that's the x-intercept, we already know one thing about this point. We know that the y is equal to zero here. So I'm going to find the intersection between that line and y equals zero. So I'm going to first find the equation for that line, which if I already know a point and the slope, I can just use point-slope formula. So I have y minus 2 equaling negative 3 times x minus 6. And I end up with the equation negative 3x plus 20 uh, for in point-slope form for this particular line here. So this line is y equals negative 3x plus 20. So we know that in this case, when it intersects the x-axis, that y is equal to 0. So to find this x-intercept, I'm going to plug in y equals 0 and solve for x. So I subtract 20 here, and I end up with 20 thirds. OK, now, if x equals 20 thirds, that means I already know my base. My base is length, because again, if this is 20 thirds comma 0, that means that this length here, b, is equal to 20 thirds. Now the last piece I need to find is the height. And this time I want to find the y-intercept of this line. Now we can't clearly see it because it's going to go off the graph, but somewhere these two lines intersect here, forming um, this point up here. So let's find now that y-intercept. And again, to review the idea of y-intercept, anytime we have a y-intercept, since it's on the x-axis here, or I'm sorry, since it's on the y-axis here and it does not move from, in, from left to right um, onto the x-axis, we know that x is equal to 0. So to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0, and we use our same equation, and we plug in for this x here a 0. We solve and we get y equals 20. So the height of this triangle here was 20 which means now we have both pieces in order to solve for the area. And again, area is 1 half base 20 thirds times 20, the height, and we get an area of 400, let's simplify actually. So that's 10 times 20, 200 thirds. All right, so this has just been a brief review in solving um, some linear equation problems. So just make sure you know all of these forms here, point-slope form, slope-intercept form, horizontal and vertical lines, as well as the concepts behind parallel and perpendicular lines.